Tanking in classic hardcore is not as easy as it sounds. You're responsible for making the pulls in the dungeon, and if you overpull, it can mean the difference in life or death for your group. That being said, there are some things you can do to reduce the risk of this happening. Welcome to the Classic Hardcore Tank Guide. Talents The most important talent for tanking in dungeons is tactical mastery. You need this talent to use macros that require stance dancing, so you don't lose all your rage when you change stances. I highly recommend leveling as arm spec and then swapping to fury with tactical mastery when you hit level 50. I'll put a link to these specs in the description below. Also, I want to make this very clear. You do not need any points in protection to be a dungeon tank. Classic tanks hold aggro by doing lots of damage, which means stop using a shield because you don't need it. Macros. First off, almost every ability you press should be macroed on a warrior. Every attack ability should have a start attack macroed into it. So that means you'll need to do this for heroic strikes, thunder, overpower, thunderclap, cleave, etc. For abilities that require you to be in battle stance, such as overpower, you should have cast battle stance macroed into that ability. So if you press overpower, it will automatically swap you. Let's go over another basic example. If you're in berserker stance and you press your charge key, it should automatically swap you to battle stance and then charge in. If you want to intercept the mob, you should have a cast berserker stance cast intercept macro that intercepts you to the mob in just one button instead of two. This is a prime example of why everything should be macroed when you're playing a warrior. I highly recommend a skull marking macro as well to tell your group which target you want them to attack. You can also use this one button swap macro to swap to a shield if you get low or if you're about to tank a boss that hits hard. Now it's time for an advanced tip. At level 50 plus, I use a macro that swaps me to berserker stance when I charge in because I never actually want to be in battle stance as a fury warrior. I highly recommend this macro if you are fury spec. If you do this right, you should charge in from battle stance, but end up with the rage and berserker stance when you land. Additionally, the rage you generate from charge will still be there even if you go over the 25 rage cap from tactical mastery. This is because you're swapping stances in the batch window so it doesn't dump the rage you've already generated. Add-ons. Threat Classic 2 is a mandatory add-on that you need when playing WoW Classic. It shows how high you are on the threat meter, and if you're the tank, you need to be on the top. You can use details because it has a tiny threat add-on built in, but I don't like it as much as Threat Classic 2. The most important add-on as a tank is going to be Threat Plates or Plater. Threat Plates changes the color of the mobs to show when you have aggro or when someone else does. This will allow you to quickly swap to that mob and taunt it or DPS it to get aggro back quickly. Lastly, I do recommend downloading Details DPS meter so you can monitor how much DPS you are doing and always try to improve, because more DPS equals more aggro. Rotation. The opener is the most important part of being a tank. Establishing an early threat lead will help you maintain aggro. Once you lose aggro on multiple mobs, it's very hard to get aggro back as a tank because you only have one taunt. The basic principle of Warrior Tank is to charge in, do as much damage as possible, then swap to defense stance. Here are some sample openers for each level range. Level 25 to 35, you'll charge in, swap to D stance, Demo Shout, Blood Rage, then Sunder Armor every mob one time. Always revenge when it procs, then you have the option to Q Cleaves for DPS or Heroic Strikes for Threat. Always taunt the first mob you lose aggro on and Mocking Blow the second. From level 36 to 50, your opener will be slightly different. You'll charge in Sweeping Strikes, then change to Berserker Stance, Blood Rage, Whirlwind, then you go to D Stance, Demo Shout, now you can Cleave or Heroic Strike for Threat. From 50 to 60, you'll charge in Berserker Stance, Whirlwind, Defense Stance, Blood Rage, Demo Shout, then Q Cleaves or Heroic Strikes for Threat. I only recommend thunderclapping if your healer is having a hard time keeping your health up. Consumables, gear, and enchants. Having the right consumables can give you a big DPS boost and can help you hold aggro in dungeons. Here are a list of consumables that you can use while tanking. Defense, Agility Mongoose, Strength, Troll's Blood, Fortitude, Food Buff, Alcohol, Magic Resist Potions, Sharpening Stones, Poison Elixir, Faps, and Lips. You want to get as much stamina, armor, strength, and agility as possible. Tanking from 1 to level 50 with a two-hand weapon, you want the slowest weapon possible with the high top-end damage to generate more threat from your whirlwinds and cleaves. Tanking from 50 to 60, you want dual-wield weapons. The speed of your weapon does matter. In the offhand, you will always want the fastest weapon possible. In the main hand, you can go with a slow weapon to generate more DPS with whirlwinds, or a fast weapon if you want to be able to queue heroic strikes as quickly as possible. This technique is mostly used at level 60. I recommend Fiery or Life Stealing on your weapons up until level 50, then Crusader if you can afford it after that. Enchanting your armor as you level can give significant stamina and agility bonuses as well. And of course, don't forget about world buffs. Party Composition 
Warriors are generally not great at holding aggro on more than four targets. Having a paladin in your group can help because they can put Blessing of Salvation on your group, reducing the amount of threat they deal. Hunters with owl pets are fantastic because they make great off tanks for larger pools. Mages are useful because they can slow, freeze, and sheep mobs when you need it. The worse your party comp is, the harder it can be for you as a tank. Racials. The best race for warrior is human because you get a plus five weapon skill of swords and maces, and most of the best weapons at endgame are swords. Orcs get a plus 5 weapon skill at axes, but there's not very many fast axes at endgame, so orcs tend to make better DPS warriors. Trolls make the best raid tanks on Horde, and they go dagger spec with ACLGs or Edge Masters. Some of the other races have good survivability traits, but if you play any race other than these three, you will be at a disadvantage. Professions. The only profession you'll ever need is engineering. Target dummies are extremely helpful when you overpull or get low on health and Dynamite can help you establish an early threat lead on large packs of mobs. Raid Tanking For tanking in Raid, the primary spec is going to be Fury Prot. This spec will generally leave out Tactical Mastery, so you'll be locked to Defense Stance now. This spec is very good at holding aggro on one target, which is why it's a great raid spec. It's more boring to play as you'll only be pressing three buttons now. Heroic Strike, Sunder, and Bloodthirst. Just spam these three buttons as fast as you can and you'll be a threat god in Raid. That's all for my warrior tanking guide. You can find my add-ons and weak ores in my Discord in the link below, and feel free to ask me any questions on stream at twitch.tv slash Please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.